Hey, Alex Orfanos, how are you? Good, how are you, Zach? I'm doing well. Uh, welcome to Space Time. We're on the ninth episode, so we're really chugging along here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thanks for having me on. Only two of these have been like weekly. Um, before that, we were kind of hit or miss doing interviews mm. here and there. Um, but my Space Explored colleague, Seth Krakowski, has got me on the train of doing these weekly. And um, because of the holidays this this week, yep. uh, we're not going to have the, the same episode. So I thought, hey, we, we've been wanting to talk to each other for a while anyway. It's, it's been, a, been, a, been, a, been a little bit. So a little bit. describe yourself. So Alex, you do the Today in Space uh, uh, series. That's right. So yep. what's that all about? So Today in Space, uh, it's a podcast I started six years ago. And yeah, it's wild. Uh, so it's funny you're talking about the weekly thing. This year has really been the first year that I've also found my focus and and done it uh, every other week. I only missed, uh, I think, a week or two, but I had COVID. So I mean that that that's that's a twenty twenty excuse. Yeah, yeah twenty twenty. So, <laughs> um, but much better and and doing well. Great. Um, but where I started, I went to school for aerospace engineering. And so back in, was it 2014? Um, was the space industry was so different. I, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't working in aerospace, but I wanted to, but I wanted to stay relevant and had loans to pay stuff. So doing my jobs, so I'm like, how do I stay in this field? So that's where this started. And then it became a really useful tool to like hash out ideas and thoughts and uh, met a bunch of people like yourself. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so, Today in Space is kind of my brain on steroids uh, and super focused. Um, and we've been talking this year specifically, we've been talking to a lot of different people. Um, so it's all things space. So it's 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 very wide net. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so the reason I asked you to come on today is because, um, you know, A, we, we we, we met a year ago at NASA Social for the SpaceX CRS-20 or CRS-19 mission. And um, you were hugely influential in getting me excited about everything that's happening in space. And it totally changed my, my next year to where I went from doing 9 to 5 Mac full time to doing Space Explored full time for the 9 to 5 Mac network, which mm -hmm. I never would have dreamed of, but like, wow. <laughs> and, I, and I always say like, you know, you're always welcome around because you are like the one, if I could pinpoint a moment, it's when we were in the cafeteria mm. um, at the subway across from the vehicle assembly building. And you were like, I was like, so what is Artemis? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, it, and you gave me like a, a really quick rundown of like the past 10 years of what's happened and then what's coming. Mm. And I could, I went home and I couldn't stop thinking about what's coming and how I didn't want to miss it and how, how much had happened without me realizing it. So mm. Fortunately, I've been able to dedicate every day this past year to making sure that, <laughs> that not just me, but other people have had the same access to that information. Yeah. Um, so for this for this episode, for this week, I want to, it's the end of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to look back at this year that we've had since Perfect. we first met. Um, it's been a wild year, but let's, let's look at just the space stuff. And right. I've broken down each month, uh, January through December, of at least one, maybe two major space events that sent out to me from that month that I think will be remembered in future years. So the first thing is in January, which is before mm -hmm. I started doing Space Explored. So I was looking back for like stories that I wrote about these things. Mm -hmm. But in, in January and February, I didn't have Space Explored yet. It was <laughs> it was an idea. You're still in the glow of, of watching your first rocket launch and, and, and figuring out what kind of black hole I threw you down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it really, like, you really, I really did need that that period of like, well, I can't just go from first exposure to starting this thing and feeling like I've got experience. Mm. And I, I did a lot of learning in the, <laughs> the first three months before Space Explored really started. Um, but the first thing I mentioned is from January, which is in flight abort mm. uh, being the the final test step before SpaceX got to fly astronauts on their crew dragon spacecraft and we we weren't here for this we were there for, you know a month prior this would have been a really cool one to see mm -hmm. i was a little jealous of the people that got to go afterwards but yeah. i've made friends with a lot of them so that's pretty cool <laughs> awesome. but it's basically spacex launching a falcon 9 rocket with a, a an empty or uncrewed mm -hmm. crew dragon capsule with the intention of doing an in-flight abort so you mm -hmm. know d demonstrating what would happen if something were, if there were a problem and the astronauts on board would need to, to abort the worst case scenario yeah, yeah get mm -hmm. away from that big rocket behind it you know 
Um, so I didn't get to see this, but I, I think in January, it definitely is the most notable thing that happened. For and sure. And like w- thinking- looking back at the footage is awesome. Oh, yeah. And like that picture of the Falcon 9, you know, doing the in-flight abort at, at right around Max Q, which is the the part of the launch where the rocket is pushing through the atmosphere. They're literally turning the throttle down on the rocket so that it doesn't vibrate and rip apart. Um, and they're aborting at that point because that's, the, you know, you got to test, you got to do it at the point you expect it to break or the whole reason you have it there, right? Worst case scenario. Um, and at this time, there was still a huge debate on whether it was even possible for SpaceX to send humans into space. And it was to think that that was only a year ago is crazy, especially with how much they've done. But yeah, it was, it was a picture worthy uh, test for sure. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, I've since moved to Orlando. So it's like 40 minutes from my apartment to go out to Kennedy. And uh, you know, I'll never miss things like that again, basically. (laughs) I think it's awesome, man. It just, yeah, we were talking about it right before the podcast, but to just to talk, just to think about how much your life has changed in a year, it's wild. Sure, it's wild. And you and Alex, you always have a couch open in Orlando if you need a place to stay. Yes. It comes to okay. happen. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Let's look at February. This is another one that 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 wasn't um, something I got, I got to cover yet because mm-hmm. it was before Space Explored, um, and so I've got a different attachment to these. They're they're not quite as personal for me, but Solar Orbiter. This mm-hmm. is. Um, this launched on an Atlas uh, four, uh, five rocket, which I did get to see launch later in the year nice. uh, for March 2020. But <laughs> this is a, a collaborative mission between the European Space Agency and NASA to study the sun. Mm-hmm. And if we look, if we look back, um, go go all the way to July, and we start to see the first data captured from this, and it's like insanely detailed pictures of the sun. It's like it's like zooming into. Do you remember when Justin Timberlake had like curly short hair, bleached short hair, and yes, in the instinct days, it looks like that. Okay, <laughs> I haven't heard that comparison. I like it. I like it. I know yeah. exactly what you're yeah. talking about. <laughs> that, that's what I bring to the table here. So, Solar Orbiter, did did you pay attention to this when it happened? Now, was this uh, the Parker Solar Probe or is this Solar Orbiter? So, Solar Orbiter, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I, I remember it launching. I didn't dive too much into it. But um, mm-hmm. just just the one thing I can talk about is, um, first of all, the United Launch Alliance, you know, I think that was one of, wasn't that one of their last Atlas V? Because th- I think they retired that rocket this year, if I'm it's, not it's, mistaken. It's, it's, it's um, well, Delta IV Heavy is going to be retired after like three more launches. Yeah. Um, Atlas V is still kicking, but it was the second to the last that I recall um, before it was of this year. I think there were two that I recall this year, one mm. being more 2020. Yeah. Mm. But anyways, um, the 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 heliocentric science that's happening right now for the sun is, I mean, we're we're getting a ton of data that we just never had before. Yeah. Um, we had a long period of solar activity the last ten years. It seems to have slowed down, but yeah, I mean, the, the sun's the whole reason we're here. So the more we can learn about it, the better for sure. Yeah, and here's what I can do now that I couldn't do a year ago. I can tell you that the Atlas V rocket is hanging around because it's what sends Starliner to mm. to space. It has station. a reason. It has yeah. a reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, and and you know, February, March. If you remember, that's kind of the before times in in twenty twenty. The old world. Yeah. You're right. Where we knew what COVID nineteen was because it refers to two thousand nineteen, um, but it, it wasn't the pandemic yet. It was. Right. It was not a pandemic yet. So um, fast forward to March. This is kind of the end of normal 2020. Yep. Um, I saw a couple, I saw two launches. This is the second time and the third time I saw a launch ever. The first after CRS-19. Uh, mm-hmm. I, t- I took um, the kids to see a Starlink launch. And that was very cool. It, it, it had, it had scrubbed the first day. It, it, get all that countdown and then it was still there. It's like, Oh no, something happened. And then um, a few days later we got to go back and see it. And it was the last day that, that Kennedy space center visitor complex was open mm-hmm. before it closed for a while. And we got to see that from, we got to see the attempt from the Apollo uh, Saturn five building. Um, and that was really cool. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, distance wise, when we came back through to see it actually launch, um, Kennedy was closed by then, and we just got to, we got to view it from 
um, from a bridge in, in town, you know, in Titusville. So amazing. Uh, yeah. And then uh, CRS 20 was that, that month as well. Mm-hmm. And I saw that from a boat at night. And that was the first time I got to see a booster return with that like purple oh. pink plasma effect. That's awesome. Yeah, because we didn't get that for our for CRS nineteen, which is shame. Right. Which is right. shame. <laughs> what I what I have learned though is like when you go where we were on the causeway for CRS nineteen for NASA social, like that's prime real estate for viewing because yeah. when you go out as press, you get to leave cameras oftentimes at the launch pad for a remote camera setup, and then separately you can go and photograph, record whatever from a viewing site, which ends mm-hmm. up oftentimes being that causeway or another causeway nearby. Mm-hmm. So like. We were pressed that day, essentially. You know, it was it's yeah. good stuff. The, the, I, I, the golden ticket for the Willy Wonka factory that is uh, <laughs> space in Florida. <laughs> yeah, in between NASA social having that like prime access and then actually yeah. being pressed, where I get press access, there was a period where I viewed everything from out, out off site, and I got to really learn, including for for DM two for the first mm-hmm. astronaut launch. Um, you know what what it's like not being in the press site and like where are all the places you can go around town and see. Mm. But it, it makes me ever more grateful for actually getting that close up access, you know, so we can yeah. share things with other people. Yeah. No, and that's um, just, they're doing amazing stuff. Um, quite, I had a question for you. Sure. Um, how are the kids taking the, the rockets, especially now, like moving there and now being able to see them? Ha- has yeah. there been any like initial questions they've had that have kind of like popped out to you or I'm just, I'm interested. So just like uh, NASA social uh, plus you got the, the gear spinning in my head, mm. me being obsessed with this now, has the gear spinning in their heads as well, mm. which I think is really cool. Cause it's one thing to do it to like somebody in like, you know, 20, 29, kind of late in life, I think. Um, but to be, you know, three and seven, that's pretty, I think it's pretty influential mm. to where it, it starts to determine, you know, or at least influence like future paths, you know? Right. So yeah. it's cool. And, and just, you know, being there in person, um, both the kids saw uh, Mars 2020 launch over the summer. Nice um that was that was neat then um recently my son rory has been with me and uh he (laughs) we went out and saw a starlink launch on a sunday and then on the following friday we wanted to go see the sirius xm7 satellite launch Mm. and i said we're going out here to go see the the rocket launch and he said it launched the other we already saw it launched it was the other day (laughs) like uh, there's more (laughs) but he's he's getting used to it He's getting used to it though. So that's yeah. great. Oh man. Um, also in March, there was this thing called Dragon XL, which is mm-hmm. we know about the Dragon capsule that SpaceX makes as their spacecraft to send cargo and people to space. Um, we've not yet seen Dragon XL materialize, but it's for sending cargo to Gateway, kind of the, the lunar mm-hmm. orbiting station. Um, so it's going to be far out when we see that, you know, in, in a few years. But I think this is going to be notable when we look back at 2020. It's, it, as far as I know, it's the first time anyone outside of SpaceX and NASA heard the term Dragon XL. Mm. <laughs> I like, saw the graphic for it and everything. And it's the last time, too, because it's still a ways out. But right. Dragon XL, part 2020. Who knew? Yep. Yep. That, that's, that's, a nice, that's a nice find, friend. That, that's yep. good. Um, yep. Not many people were talking about that. <laughs> and speaking of really cool SpaceX hardware that, that's coming um, to future NASA missions, perhaps April was huge. Like, you know, it's big because that's when NASA announced the three teams or companies that would be awarded initial funds to develop a human landing system for the Artemis moon missions. And so NASA with space launch system, they have the rocket to send Orion, the spacecraft, to the moon, but to get down to the moon, you need the human landing system. Mm-hmm. And that's what these three companies, SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Dynetics, uh, were picked for. Um, Blue Origin is part of the national team, which includes ULA and some other companies as well. Mm-hmm. And I think there is one the most amount of money, followed by Dynetics and then SpaceX. But the, the SpaceX one stands out because even if it doesn't get funded, by NASA, it's going to happen. Like, yeah, because it's Starship. It's it's right. a lunar version of Starship. Mm-hmm. And I got to see a few weeks ago. I was at Boca Chica, Texas. Like, oh. this is how far down in the rabbit hole I've gone. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're <laughs> watching test test launches. <laughs> yeah, I got to see the nose cone 
for you know what appears to be the, the lunar the lunar starship yeah yeah so that's you know we've seen since april some status updates on how those are going i think mm-hmm. the most recent thing from that is that nasa said that they'll fund they've got funding for one there was talk of maybe doing all three if they could but i don't think they got enough money for that um they're gonna narrow it into two pretty soon and I wouldn't be surprised if we see SpaceX's Starship version taken out of, of the two. Um, I'd say that's but, fair. But we know that that's going to, whether it's for NASA or for SpaceX, it's going to happen anyway. Because mm-hmm. Starship's happening anyway. And it looks really cool. Like, oh, my God. It's, like, it's worth the art. It, it's wild to see that just the speed of the progress that they're they're doing is kind of keeping up with our interest in the subject. I think that was a problem for a really long time was the, the, the passion behind it was so hard to keep up because we just yeah. couldn't put rockets. I mean, Orion, right. We talk about um, SLS and the Orion Orion. I was watching the other day, I think six years, five years since it, it last launched on a test launch. And um, I think there's, there's still work that needs to be done on it. So um, I'm just glad they're there. Yep. 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 Yeah. I, I, when I talk to people who have been in this field for longer than me, you know, yourself included, I got in so late. I, it's like perfect timing for me and like my yeah. tolerance because I'm seeing a lot of really cool stuff happen from the beginning, mm-hmm. but I, but I don't have to wait through like the, the promises and the long delays and just the mm-hmm. pace that ex- it actually takes. Um, of the, the last cuts, years, the, the yeah. missions getting planned and scrubbed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The shipping <laughs> strategies and everything. I just cut right mm-hmm. to the good stuff. <laughs> it's crazy. And then that's 10 years are going to be that like, if, if this year was busy with space, mm-hmm. the next 10 are going to be crazy. Yeah. So I, I haven't had a long enough time to be jaded yet. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> yep. Um, if we go to May, this one was a biggie because it's the, it's the DM two mission, um, mm. the demonstration um, mission two. So this is the, the first time that SpaceX launched astronauts on a Falcon nine and on a crew dragon capsule. It's the first astronaut launch since the last shuttle launch, mm-hmm. which was seven, eight years before that. Um, it's also like in the, in the, in the thick of COVID, you know, so it's a really yeah. weird time. Um, yeah, and and then in terms of just society, it's a very tense time in society too. A mm-hmm. lot, lot of issues with policing and racial injustice happening, mm-hmm. um, and it was, it was just a very even that day, even that the day, day of the launch was that, yeah, yeah, like yeah. it was hard. <laughs> a lot was happening in the news that wasn't the first astronaut launch in years from the U.S. Yeah, for sure. Um, I made the trip out to. This is the, the from March. That was a trip I made after NASA Social, which was December, and then I went back in May for the for for DM two, mm-hmm. and I had a hotel because I wanted to see uh, I wanted to see the astronauts launch, and uh, I had like a week of hotel, and then after the first night there, I was so worried I would miss a, a good viewing spot because I wasn't <laughs> pressed yet. Uh, that I slept in my car for the like <laughs> a few nights to like ensure yes. that I had my spot that I wanted. And Hardcore, uh, man. <laughs> Space Force on Netflix had just been released that week, oh. and so I watched it in the car on the iPad. You know, like it was I was living it, um, <laughs> and I was doing a, a little bit of like video recording and everything. And I was just like, "This is not where I thought I would be six months ago, but it's exactly where I want to be right now." That's great, and I, and I kind of like that. I got to have that experience where it was, um, it was at the Max Beer, Max Beer Bridge in Titusville. Mm. And um, I was away from the big crowds and everything, but I was, I, I could walk around, you know, with a mask on and kind of interact with people and take like crowd shots and everything. And I feel like I really got what a public launch is like. And that one being the first astronaut launch in years was in the U S was, was huge. So I'm glad I got to get to see that one from the outside. Um, but it was big. And, and if you recall, I was looking back at stories and, a day or two before, like one day before, talking about Starship, SpaceX's Starship prototype, SN4 yep. exploded mm-hmm. <laughs> at mm-hmm. a time where they didn't think it was going to explode. <laughs> and I'm sure you saw the headlines whenever SN8 crash landed oh. a few weeks ago. You know, mm-hmm. and the headlines, they took it way out of context and 
mm-hmm. you know, made it seem like it was an accident, not a test flight that was expected to go that way. But a massive um, failure, I think it was called a few times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but to have SN4 be a fire explosion the day before astronauts launch, just like, oh, you really need the context to understand that one. So like I was quick yeah. to write a story that was just like bold print. This is nothing related to that, even though the SpaceX and SpaceX is totally mm-hmm. different. No, it's true. And, and and this is this is like the really key thing, like looking back at I always want to refer back to the space shuttle, especially. And this is where my mind was that month. SN4 explodes. They're launching astronauts the day or day after day, day or two after. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to be safe or well, you got to have an option that's a backup. Now, we, we saw the the um, the in-flight abort earlier that year, but there's something about seeing something explode. Like it's already the trauma is there from the space shuttle. Like we lost two and those two were enough despite all the various successes that were there. Mm -hmm. Um, And that killed the program up until now we have momentum again, but that's Mm -hmm. what killed it was losing lives, which Mm -hmm. it seems like a crazy thing to say out loud. Like it should be obvious, but it's, that is what killed the space program. Um, So that week was, very very rough because again like you were saying regardless of what the situation was there weren't astronauts on there that Mm -hmm. could have made a really big impact and luckily bob and doug were completely safe and it went off without a hitch you know if you were playing it pr wise you would not schedule an sn4 explosion the day before a crude launch (laughs) no (laughs) (laughs) um going to june you know in june we've we've got we see the the rest of the dm2 mission you know we see docking and everything mm-hmm. and there's there's the ceremony and it's very exciting there wasn't a whole lot that happened in space in june for a very busy mm-hmm. year um june was kind of one of those periods where you know there, there were some routine launches but the one thing that's kind of said out its news to me was there was a suborbital space flight mission division where nasa formally said that they've got this subsea team which is going to be not astronauts, but engineers, scientists who don't have to go through the same astronaut program mm. to go to space on the suborbital space flights, like what you see with um, with, with Blue Origin and um, Virgin Galactic, Vir- Virgin Galactic, and and so it's a, it's an official path that's kind of being it's it, the program's you know brand new, totally in its infancy, but mm. it, it got a name, it got a leader, and it's the sub C group you know, for suborbital, whatever, <laughs> you know, suborbital crew, I think is what they're going for. Oh, um, I missed this story. This is cool to know. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it got a leader. It's, it's, it's under commercial crew, I believe. So it's mm. like a, a, a sub branch of commercial crew. Um, okay. But this guy, uh, Scott um, Coyarito, I think is his name. He's, mm. he's in, he's in charge of the program. And so it was put out there specifically just to say, you know, we've got these companies, Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin. And I think they're both named in this program. Um, as, 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 you know, potential partners, but that there will be, you know, for, for civilians, just no problem, you know, as long as there's, there's the ticket to space, but mm. for NASA to be involved officially, there needs to be this program. And, um, you know, we got commercial crew off the ground this year. So sub C sub sub orbital crew Hell yeah. <laughs> won't just include astronauts. You know, you could be a janitor and, uh, potentially have a, have a way of, you know, if you've got a purpose. So I think that's pretty cool. That's great. Especially because um, I know that they made the requirements to be in the astronaut Corps. Uh, I think you need mm-hmm. a master's degree now. So that cut out a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's good to know. I didn't know that that second tier option was, cause I had some people ask, uh, you know, kids are in school right now yeah. looking for their path had asked, you know, how do I, what's the path? And so I'm going to, I'm going to be sending that out. That's good to know. Yeah. So if you're working on a project that could, you know, you could do an experiment um, in zero gravity, you know, and all you need is a few minutes in space to conduct the experiment. Mm. You don't need, you know, six months on the space station right. to do it. Then, then that's what this is going to be about. And this is one of those things where I want to look at the next decade, you know, mm. I, I love tracking what, Virgin Galactic is doing and what, um, you know, you know, all these different companies are doing when it comes to this stuff, because none of them are really ready to go yet, but they're yeah. all doing their, their test demonstration flights. You know, they're all testing the technology right now, mm-hmm. which has been based on like years and years and years of preparation. And like, this is this past year was the year where we see those things happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think in 2021, we'll start seeing these things be maturing out of the test phase. 
Mm. So it's, it's really cool. Yeah. And, and this kind of brings up the topic of a space economy. Like um, it's the one thing that could help stabilize the, the balance of the force in the space industry, because it's tied so much to uh, political funding. And, you know, if, if the next administration decides to not go to Mars or not go to the moon with Artemis, that could happen. That's happened plenty of times in the past. Constellation program, um, asteroid return. Um, and then now we're with Artemis. Um, so having the start of a space economy like that, like having giving businesses the chance, especially medical industry for sure, with sure, drug yeah. testing and stuff, um, if they can do these kinds of things in orbit and there's a value for it and they, they're able to make this economy happen in space, that it secures a a better chance. You know, the, the big dream everyone wants is to live in space one day, but it's super hard to do these parabolic like like Hail Marys. Like that was the, the Apollo missions with this, uh, you know, it was backed by the fact that we were worried that we were going to lose to the Russians and that it was national security. So we had that and then it didn't have any plan afterwards and it died with mm -hmm. Artemis. It's great. How do we get people up there? But once you have it up there, we're going to have the same problem of what's next. Mm -hmm. And if we don't address it with something like a space economy to give businesses and, and for lack of a better way of saying it, a flow of money to go into space that's not tied to taxes, mm -hmm. that's a better chance for us to have that future we're looking for. Yeah, not just Apollo and then, you know, the future of Artemis, but also look at the space station right now. And that's one of the big debates is, that's being had is, um, you know, what is the plan for space station in the future? Because it's not mm -hmm. forever. And the idea is to have multiple space stations all commercially funded and maybe transition the current space station over to commercial. Um, but there's not a direct answer yet for what's the plan, you know, so right. it's, it's, it's a process. Absolutely. Yep. Let's go to July. Okay. In, in July to the launch of the Mars 2020 rover named Perseverance. Perseverance. Yeah. And the helicopter that's like a technology test to, to fly on Mars. Uh, I mm. believe it's called Ingenuity. Yes. Yep, yep. Uh, this one was a big one because I got to go out there as press. It was a week-long experience doing interviews for Space Explored and nice. – you know, meeting the kids that named the rover and the helicopter. Nice. Um, got to do a remote interview with some folks from JPL. Just really getting my feet wet and all this stuff. You are. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I, I, I drove uh, – uh, so in, in May, I, I bought a motorcycle that came in June. After DM2, I came home to my motorcycle and, like, got, got my feet wet with riding a motorcycle. Oh, you're going down the astronaut path, man. <laughs> and in, in July, I, I rode my motorcycle from um, Biloxi, Mississippi – to Cape Canaveral, which was, was like 700 miles. And it's my first bike, so it's not a powerful bike. It's a 300cc motorcycle. And that's it's like stopping for gas every 90 minutes to fill mm -hmm. it up. But man, that was an experience. Uh, I got to drive my bike out on the launch pad where the Atlas V was, <laughs> you know, holding the payload that was Perseverance, the rover. <laughs> And took a photo of that and everything, and you know, it was, this whole experience—it was it was awesome. Um, I met my my now colleagues um, Daryl Sase and Seth Krakowski, formerly mm -hmm. there. Um, we've been in communication before, but it was it was March 2020 in July where we really got the ball rolling on. You know, hey, let's talk about this, this space explorer plan that we have. Um, you know, full disclosure, it's just my idea, and I'm kind of doing it on my own, but uh, I'd love for you guys to come and help out, and we 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 did. Um, they did. And, and by having them talk about it with me out loud, it was like mm. felt real then. Yeah. And then, and then we got this like last minute experience where I was going to go out. I, I did my first remote camera setup mm. with my colleague Daryl on the phone with me. And we rehearsed the night before, like all the things to do. Cause I'm not a photographer. Um, that's primarily. very important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, we had like a script and everything of like the whole process and that was fun. Um, but then actually for like for viewing, it was the perfect launch because there was no scrub. Um, uh, it, was a, it was a several hour window, but it happened like in the first moment of the window opening. And Seth and Daryl got to come out with me. I was the only one who had credentials to go out that, that week, but we got them credentials at the last minute through the Air Force and Space Force. Nice. And um, that was the beginning of, of that relationship that's since been awesome. Um, I was out there through NASA and then they were out there through Air Force. Mm. And we were there at the same place. And we got to, you know, take pictures and videos of the launch and everything. And it was just so perfect. 
and it it was it was like this this became real then yeah. and it's it's cool because you know march 2020 is one of these missions where the launch was just the first step mm. then there's this month-long process to go from july 30th to february 18th the arrival of mm -hmm. perseverance on mars and that's coming up soon so, so close mm -hmm. it's so close Yep, and perseverance is like to, to do a very general description of what perseverance is, is, is on, on Mars to do is to look for signs of ancient life mm -hmm. on Mars. So, so not looking for aliens, but looking for evidence that could support that there was ancient life at one point. Um, and and one of the interviews I got to do, uh, there were a few, but there were some really high level NASA people who were available to interview there. And um, man, I, I recorded this and put it out as a podcast on this feed before, but. It was just so cool talking to people who were way smarter than me. Obviously, they're at like the top of their class. They're, they're leading NASA. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was through your help, especially like in getting me started with with, with being able to kind of like hold a conversation with people who otherwise I would have no idea how to, you know, a few months prior. Mm. <laughs> um, and, and I walked away feeling smarter for it. So that's probably, you know, DM2 is big, mm. but. March 2020 for me, like that might be the highlight of the year for me in terms of just the experience that was starting. Mm. No, that's really, and I'm so glad that you mentioned that because like, I think the challenge science has right now, and this is what I, what I hope that I do well is like bringing the conversation to anybody. Like yeah. you don't have to be super smart to understand what's going on. And like sometimes, and I'm guilty of this myself, like, there's a way that engineers and scientists talk. And then there's a way that like just people in general talk. And sometimes if you don't live in both those worlds, you sound mm -hmm. like you're speaking a completely different language. Mm -hmm. So um, that is, that is amazing to hear that you had that experience with them. Um, so hooray. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, totally. It's, it's, uh, it, you know, what you're able to do is, is have your head in both worlds. And so you can, you know, you kind of serve as a conduit and the translator in between. Um, mm -hmm, indeed. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's, that's not unlike what I'm trying to do. And, you know, having, having the, you know, my, my, my background dated from December to, to July. <laughs> it's like, awesome, you know, I, but I, and I, I never, speed. yeah, but, but it also was based on, you know, seven, eight years of Apple reporting and having experience with like talking to like, you know, company executives and that kind of thing. Mm. So it's like, without that experience, you know, married with what I've been doing for the past six months, I think it would have been very difficult, but yeah. it was like, just think of them as, you know, Apple executives basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they're just people, you know, kind of find that common ground in terms of like getting to know each other first and then diving in. Yeah. Um, speaking of diving in August splashdown, Bob and Doug come back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. We're able to see that whole procedure. Like that was a, that was really exciting for me. I think one of the top five moments for me in space was seeing and, and watching like throughout the day of the coverage of them returning. Um, it was a little scary with how close people were getting with all of, mm -hmm. all of the splashdown. Um, but I mean, to be fair that, you know, it's, it's just evidence that it's so popular right now in yeah. what everyone is you know, in, in popular zeitgeist, I guess the word, I don't, I don't really understand that word. So I don't, I try to say it as much. I mean, so there were like five or seven, I think there were five, maybe seven splashed on sites, potentially um, around Florida, you mm. know, on, on the East coast and on the Gulf coast side. And they ended up being the Pensacola side. So mm. right there in the Gulf of Mexico, and it had to be published ahead of time so that, boaters would know to avoid the area and, and planes and everything. And some boaters took that opportunity to, instead of avoid the area, target the area. Do it. Yeah. yeah. They did. And when it was happening live, I was like, maybe they're just passers by who saw mm. the spacecraft come out of the sky and they want to go investigate it. And I really, I was like trying to really defend them. And then that night me and my team found evidence where they had been planning it out for mm. a few days like it was very coordinated and i was like nope nope no benefit of the doubt this was totally like they knew they took the order to not go and they use that as, as the map to go it's, mm. like, oh, it's horrible but I know. well it, it's a good it's a good reason because I, I think one another question that's going to come up you you talked about the space force and and just military presence in space mm -hmm. that is one of the main like one of the kind of routine procedures that the military will play in in things like this is is getting in there and making sure that things are clear 
um, so that people are safe. So mm-hmm. they, they do have a function there. Yeah, they had a little bit of a contract, I think, uh, with an, an agreement with Coast Guard. And I think this next time for Crew 1, whenever Crew 1 splashes down, there'll be a lot a lot mm-hmm. more, uh, they'll be ready for, for whatever comes. But yeah. yeah, just like DM2 was an all-day event, you know, I think Splashdown was even more that way for me because you could, you could have it on TV, you know, have it on NASA TV or YouTube or wherever, and, um, you know, just kind of go about your day and just have it in the background. And, yeah. like, it lasted the whole day, you know, mm-hmm. and it was – Something that, you know, I was, I was visiting my aunt and uncle in South Florida and I would keep them updated. Like, okay, now's the time we got to come. Like, you can't miss this moment because this hasn't happened before, basically. Yeah. You know, so. Yes, it's the 70s. It was the last time we did it. That's right. Yep. So, and and man, that's it's, it's wild. So that was the big one from August for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, when we go look at September, does anything stand out in September for you? I know you probably seen the notes, but yeah. if you're just look, looking back at the year, a lot of these are launches. A lot of these are, you know, astronaut related. September though, it was a big one, and it surprised me when I was looking back at what it was. <laughs> it was the news that an atmospheric phosphine molecule was discovered was viewed in Venus's atmosphere, mm-hmm. and this phosphine molecule can be related to life, not people, but some type of life. Mm -hmm. And the idea being the surface of Venus is not hospitable for life, but, and the extreme outside of Venus is not either. It's too hot, it's too cold, but there's this middle area that could support some form of life. And the observance of this phosphine molecule doesn't rule it out <laughs> you know basically they right. see it and part of the scientific process is you know make a hypothesis is it this no is it this no and you say well is it could could it be this and there you know we haven't heard a whole lot of it about it since then i think there will need mm-hmm. to be more mi- missions ar- about around venus to really determine what are we looking at here mm-hmm. but it definitely wasn't dismissed entirely as no yeah, that could be life you know that could be a sign of life right yeah and so absolutely that was that was a good explanation um, I think I, I think I heard there was they're they're in the scientific process now. So it you know it's initial research. Some scientist I heard had uh, took issue with how they I guess how the algorithm worked for them to figure out the the actual observing of the phosphine molecule. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the process, right? That's the gauntlet yeah. of the the scientific process is is peer review, which is yep. good. Um, but it's it's true. It's like it's one of those things where does it make us redefine what we consider life and what we could find? Because that that then that changes, you know, talking about the scientific process, you know, you've got your hypothesis, which is we think life, you know, is needs to be in a Goldilocks zone like our solar system with uh, coming out of a puddle of water, which is why we look for water when we go places. But with, mm-hmm. with Venus, it makes us question that original assumption of sure you know are there other places that we can we can go look so just the fact that it even if it comes out that that wasn't the case um Mm -hmm. it definitely triggered everybody to to think and rethink about okay where can we find alien life and um and then i think for the rest of the year we we started getting uh uh, more alien confirmations or at least at least uh uh less denial about it let's put it that way yeah yeah So that, that was that was a fun one because it's, it's not just you know human space flight or launches mm. or test launches. It, it's it's the science side of things, and mm. you know where Mars will be that it was the launch to get there. Um, but that that was one where it will probably fuel future missions around involving Venus. Mm. But it was that that lone scientific discovery that it, you know we pinpoint to September twenty twenty. That that's that's when this you know whatever happens with it goes back to. Yep. Um, similarly in October, there was a really cool mission that, you know, like game day came for this mission. It's the mm-hmm. Osiris Rex mission to collect rocks from, um, uh, Bin- Binu? Uh, yeah, story Binu. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it was really neat. There's this touch and go, they call it uh, process where like, you know, the spacecraft gets right up there and. Um, like blast some air and like dust goes everywhere and it opens up like a pan and it puts it in there and they had this problem where they had too much and it was kind of seeping out and they had to like the last minute, you know, 
decide what are we going to do? And they, 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 they worked out the problem and everything. And it wasn't a problem. It was like they had more than they, they wanted than they could have imagined. It worked too um, well. <laughs> with a material, right. But I don't know about you, but in that, in that moment where, you know, there was like a seven minute delay or so of what's being reported back. But mm-hmm. in, in, as far as we are concerned, it's real time of learning what's happening. And it's really what's happened seven minutes ago or so. But, you know, there was, a, so there's a period where it's like, well, whatever happens it's already happened. So you really can't worry. Uh, but we're still waiting to learn what that was. And, you know, there was like these super grainy images um, being sent back of like, of how it went. And yeah. it went swimmingly yeah. <laughs> for what it was. No, and those and, moments are fun. And I think we'll, we'll have that same delay moment uh, for February with 2020 with Mars. Yeah. 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 I, I started listening. Um, I was at my home office working and then it kind of crept over into the time where I go pick up my kid from daycare. Mm. And so like I, I put the audio over the car stereo and I'm listening in. And then the moment where I'm going to like send my kid out of daycare and, and bring him back to the car, it's like when things are happening and like they're, they're there waiting for me to come. Like they see me, we, we made eye contact. I've got to go get him. It was <laughs> awkward. And so I just roll on the windows and turn up the car stereo and I'm like blasting it in the bigger parking lot of what's happening. You know? <laughs> like, so you got to make it happen somehow. <laughs> exactly. So we all knew what happened with with that with with, uh, with Osiris Rex on that day. That's amazing. Uh, and the interesting thing about uh, Banu is uh, that asteroid is one of those that we've identified as like an untouched treasure chest of what the early solar system was. So that's part of the reason why it's so intriguing. Because then if we can figure out what was there, like what materials are available we can then look for other solar systems that like ours um to see if we're looking at you know uh, another solar system that could have life like us um and then the other difference is bringing back more material than uh than really any other asteroid return mission um Mm -hmm. which will give us plenty to actually look at which is very cool again why it was so full (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's right. And this is a mission that, that began uh, in, in 2016, you know, where it, the rocket that sent the spacecraft out was a 2016 launch. And so, mm-hmm. you know, four years later, you, you get, you, you see the moment of truth of will this work or not? And it went great. And yep. um, I'm, I'm looking in my story about it's 2023 is when we will have the sample return in yep. West Utah and the desert. So um, again, it's more to look forward to. Yep. Yep. And and the way that they describe it as an ancient space time capsule, just to kind of describe what you were saying was, you know, what are we looking at here? Well, it's going to be an ancient space time capsule. How about that? I I love that. That's great. That's, I like that. Yep. Um, November, we're getting to the end of the year. We have the launch of crew one. This is the first operational flight Mm -hmm. for SpaceX where you're not just sending two test pilots on the crew dragon spacecraft to dock with the, space station and live for a few weeks and it'll be longer than that because they were shorthanded, but um, that's Bob and Doug. This is um, the first the full crew, four astronauts, including mm-hmm. one from, from Japan who I got to run into um, oh, that's awesome. at, at, the, at the Atlantis exhibit. I was like, Hey, oh. you're, so, you're, you're so easy to aren't you? Yeah. We got, <laughs> a, we got a picture. Uh, <laughs> that was cool. But yeah. So it's the first operational flight, meaning that uh, it's crew rotation. They relieved crew. They'll be there for, for you know around six months, and they'll come back. And there's this process where now there's always going to be a dragon, whether it's crew dragon or cargo dragon, mm. uh, dragon two now attached to ISS. And it's like it's happening. You know, it's no longer this can it be done, but it's this is what's happening. Um, and, and seeing this, you know, it was, this was cool. I, I got I didn't get to see DM two um, from the press site. You know, I was I was in my you know in my car at Max Brewer Bridge in Titusville. This one got to see from the press site and got to do some interviews uh, that week. And it was terrific. It, you know, seeing like we got to see a Falcon 9 launch cargo to, to the space station. And that was amazing. You know, it's yeah. so bright and loud and like just physical. You, you really experience all of it. Um, it looks exactly the same from afar, you know, from right. three miles away, three, five miles away. Um, but just knowing that there's people on board, it touches mm-hmm. you know, in a different way. It's just there's suddenly there's risk involved. that isn't just cargo, mm-hmm. you know um it's like there were four people on that candle <laughs> yeah and um I, I mean we were doing a live stream of it and i think the way that i put it was just that there's something romantic about it you know it's and this is the challenge this is the challenge wow. of the space industry because that moment and I, I felt the same thing just watching you know 
hundreds of miles up the coast in in Massachusetts um, mm-hmm. on my phone. I, well, we were feeling that that emotion of sending humans, and mm-hmm. like we talked about Banu and we talked about you know Mars twenty twenty. It's really hard to keep people's attention for yeah. those three, four, five years that it takes, or or even months, you know, between mm-hmm. things happening. And as much as we love rovers and we should do more robotic stuff it's not the same as sending humans yeah so it, it's it's one of those things we've got to balance with and find the right the right thing but it was romantic is a great way to say it yeah there's definitely uh in, in the next 10 years a lot of opportunities on the books for human space flight mm. where that where there, there wasn't the same you know path low earth orbit and the 2010s you know and especially from the u.s so that's I think that's where a lot of interest in, in, in this is coming from now too, because it's, it it's anytime, you know, if I watch the evening news or something and there's like a, a space story or two space stories in the news, I'm like, yeah, that's what I was excited about today. Right. And it's, right. it's in the news and, and, you know, they're, they're, they're talking to the general public about it. That's awesome. Um, and I, I think we're going to see a whole lot more of that now because we're not just going to see space stations, but we're also going to see these, these, these moon missions. So, yeah. Uh, and then who knows what else, because there's, you know, tourism and there's these suborbital mm-hmm. flights and mm-hmm. there's Tom Cruise going to make a movie and <laughs> it's, yep. you know, a million things. It's crazy. December. I came away from crew one thinking, cool. The next thing that I care a lot about is the space launch system core stage hot fire test. Mm. You know, there was a chance that it was going to be in December. Didn't quite make it. Um, mm. You know, still, still pending, but I think it's going to be January, but what we're looking at. And um, I was just like, tell, I told my team, you know, you guys are working on whatever you want to work on. I'm, I'm focused on on core stage at, at Cynus. And um, I thought that would be my main focus until uh, I saw a lot of uh, hype around SpaceX's Starship SN8 prototype rocket. And I came from Orlando back to Mississippi for Thanksgiving. And I thought... From Orlando, it's very far to go to Boca Chica, Texas, <laughs> like 20 hours. But from here where I used to live and I'm visiting for Thanksgiving, it's only 12 hours. So I made made that trip, stayed for about a week, got to go out there and see, you know, you just it's a public road where, where mm-hmm. the launch site is and where the assembly building is and everything. And not even a building is a tent, you know. Um, but you just you go right, like you just go out there and there's Mexico, there's the Gulf of Mexico. Like you, you literally see Mexico. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can drive your car on the beach and then like there's fishermen on this side and there's fishermen on that side and there's two different countries. <laughs> it's like, and, and your phone service, like I've got Verizon and it says, welcome to Mexico. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, that's how close you are. It's crazy. And, um, you know, it was, it was a while. It's like that Starship, that's S and eight. That's, that's the, the prototype rocket, you know? And I, I knew about Starship and everything and, and covering, you know, SpaceX and, and, and the news of the air, but um, seeing it and seeing that thing in person and then getting a sense of that area, you know, living out there for a week um, gave me a really good understanding of like what I'm talking about, what I'm reporting on it mm. remotely. Um, and I had to walk away from it without seeing it launch, um, came back for a few days and then I was going to go and see the Delta four heavy mission mm. um, for NRL 44, the spy satellite that had tried to launch a few months earlier and it kept having issues. Cursed. I, 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 I've seen many of the attempts, but not the actual launch because I decided <laughs> Eh, we'll, we'll go back out and see SN8 again. Maybe, maybe it'll launch this time. And uh, it did. It, it was amazing. Your view was amazing. And I wanted to, the crowd noise that you caught on that one video was special. Like yeah. that just captured for me what's happening down there Yeah. in one moment. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. You know, our friend Gene was at, at uh, CRS-19. That, that was his mm. first launch, you know, Falcon 9 launch, any launch. He came from... Boca Chica, Texas. He came from South Padre Island, um, you know, Brownsville area, all that. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I'd seen them earlier in the year in March at an EV car show in Austin, Texas. And I was like, right. hey, you know, we saw each other at NASA Social, you know, funny seeing you here and everything. And then getting to go to his home turf and seeing what he was talking about a year before. Yeah. It was just, it was like, you're not just some crazy like surfer dude. You know, this is, <laughs> this is, this is it. <laughs> he was way ahead of everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I uh, got to have dinner with, with uh, him and his wife and, and some friends and, and uh, everything. And, and man, that was, that was a magical experience. I don't know if you see, uh, I don't know if you saw a cosmic perspectives video. It's like a short film mm. of, 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 of the launch, but also um, 
Gene talks over it and does like a voiceover of like answers and questions, like what it means to him. And then his wife, Rachel does. And it's really tremendous. You've got to see it if you haven't yet. Cool. Um, no, I just started following cosmic perspective. So that's, that's good to know. I'll, I'll look up that. Yep. Yeah. So their video, um, it's a married couple and, and they, they do all kind of cool stuff, but, but their video captures like the soul of the experience. Mm. So seeing, seeing it in person was, was amazing. Um, sharing the experience, you know, and people being excited about it remotely was awesome. Yeah. But what, what you couldn't put into like a news report is, you know, how it felt with the people and everything mm. and just like what it means for that area. And I think their video does that, you know, because, mm. because Gene is a local and he's lived there his whole life and everything like that's his town. And, um, you know, this was the biggest thing that's happened there, you know, e even since yeah. SpaceX moved in, it's like there, there, there's been, tests there's been explosions there's been all mm -hmm. kind of cool activity but this was the first high altitude test and it wasn't just that starship you know hopped it was that it went way up did a belly flop maneuver you know did a landing mm -hmm. maneuver and then came within seconds of landing and then blew up but that yep. was cool <laughs> yeah it was amazing and like and this what's what's really cool to think about it in the perspective of this year right we talked about the beginning of the year uh, or middle of the year SN4 exploding, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Overpressurization, definitely right before we're sending humans, that's pretty scary. SN8, before that test launch, uh, the burst disk exploded, which was put in there as a precaution to make sure that something like SN4 doesn't happen again. Yeah. And to see that get repaired and then them launch, I mean, like if if you're looking at a new company that's that's trying to send humans a totally different way, they're the engineers there are doing it. They're actually yeah. really quickly making fixes, even though you know it fails. They're failing fast and learning faster, which like, is it, it's all in, it's all in the journey of, of searching for data, you know. And so yeah. this this test experience informed what they do with SN nine um, and SN ten and beyond. And um, you know, I, I think this next one will probably see them land it. <laughs> but I but that wasn't even the point. Like we know that they can land the booster. You know, we know that yeah. they can land. Um, they've mm -hmm. got that worked out. It's just you know, change the numbers a little bit. And, but what we didn't know is, can they do this belly flop maneuver? Can they do this landing maneuver where it, it launches vertically, it goes horizontal to slow, you know, on, on its way down and then it goes mm -hmm. back vertical again. Like that was wild. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and it was so slow, like all of it. I know I was doing uh, video tracking with the, with the camera and yeah. I thought, you know, first I thought, oh, it aborted, you know, there's, there's, right. there's flames that are still there. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, oh, no, it's going. So, like, let me start tracking it. And, like, it went really fast upward. Everyone did, from what I saw. <laughs> and then it's like, it goes back down because, like, oh, that thing's just chugging along. It's not, you know, zapping out of here. It's just chugging along. Um, it was, that was awesome. And I definitely want to go back and see more of that because this was yeah. the first one. Uh, this was the first Starship prototype that, that looks like a Starship, you know, mm -hmm. vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think, uh, the previous ones look more like, you know, grain silos that, that sure. Yeah. I have, I have some, some examples here. So we can share them yeah. off. This is the star hopper, right? This is what you mm -hmm. see as like the R2D2 in front of all those test launches um, mm -hmm. where they put equipment so they can take cameras and stuff like that. Right. Um, and then this was right before. So like you were saying that corn silo, right? Yeah. So right before this is that first launch SN six right before. Um, so all they did more or less was add add the nose nose cone, nose cone and and, 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 uh, the flaps and yep, yep yep and now it looks like a, now it looks like a starship exactly you know? crazy. And, and that was awesome uh i can't wait to see that same thing with super heavy underneath it you know yeah. like because it's oh, so yeah. huge but then like it's like way bigger with super heavy underneath it and you know earlier in the year i was reading about starship and i was reading about what's happening in texas and everything and following more people around there and um i just I couldn't get a tangible grasp on this is happening mm. um because it was all kind of you know there's this announcement a year ago or, or more details from a year ago there's this you know years of of discussion about the idea and name changes and everything um but you can't deny now that like there's real tangible stuff happening and having that experience to go out there you know it's far it's far out there from anywhere <laughs> i've been before yeah. um but it just feels like you know another, another piece of home now and um mm. Other than SpaceX doing the testing up there, it, it's a very relaxed, like chill area. <laughs> it's crazy. So I, I hope you get the chance to go out there. When, when the that is out. in my 2021 plan, obviously assuming everything goes well with the vaccine and then however 2021 is going to pan out. That's yeah. definitely the plan. Uh, find some people, 
um, and head down there. Um, but like you said, it, it's undeniable, but people are still going to deny it. And and this is yeah. like the cultural aspect that that I've talked about for years in the podcast and is kind of the angst as an aerospace engineer that made me start this podcast today in yes. space. Um, there is a almost religious idea behind like traditional space that if like the belly flop maneuver that mm -hmm. would have been scratched off right away because it's brand new there's no flight heritage and it's just too expensive to do it it's the way that we've always done until it's done it's crazy that you know it's it's just it's so cool to see someone take that step and go well, let's figure it out mm -hmm. you know like elon with all his faults he put his money up and and made it so that this was possible mm -hmm. his own money like the first falcon one launch was their last try and they got it and they've been on a roll since like i i think it's great i think it brings up just we don't have to do things like we've always done them if if we're having a problem or we or if you ever say it can't happen i'm gonna be on the other side of it saying i i don't believe you like yeah. it, it, it to, to say never with something like space travel just is untrue to the history of space travel. The first mission to the moon with Apollo should never have happened. It was impossible at that time that we could actually send them there and they didn't die either on the way to the moon or on their way back, mm -hmm. but we did it. That's, that's what the space program is about. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just strange culturally inside. Once you get into the space world, as you've seen, how much resistance there is to that. But mm -hmm. I'm just really happy that in this year, the the big space like NASA and SpaceX combined forces to work together. Um, we don't see it much, but now this year, we, we saw all the work they've been doing over the years to make this happen. Yeah, if, if I had to summarize like 2020 in, in, in space, you know, in a way it's that um, there's a, there's a it, it, it's a very material year in that, it's not just contracts and planning and, you know, this is what we're going to do. It's, this is a demonstration of an idea. This is a demonstration of a technology. Um, this is an execution of a mission that launched years ago. And, or this is, this is planting the seeds for a mission that's going to be fruitful for years to come. Um, so I think this, this year, I mean, and it's all in a year where, you know, from March on, there's this pandemic that just cripples the nation, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and so much was still able to happen. Um, yeah. You know. Well, and and the the amazing thing about the comparison between the early space race, the first space race, and now, and and I wish it wasn't this way, but for whatever reason, it's crossing over the social unrest, and the uh, what I hope people see it as is is a signal of hope with space is going mm -hmm. going and doing things that are impossible in a time where nothing seems possible. Mm -hmm. um, it's weird that those two things are now happening at the same time um but that to me just gives me hope that there's a lot of good change here to come so yep yep anything in 2021 that you're looking forward to uh space wise that that um you just kind of can't wait to see can be maybe in a few things if you have some ideas sure um well yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see where this relationship with spacex and nasa goes from here um and not just spacex the private industry in general um one of the things I love that SpaceX does is they kind of crack the egg open of, of new possibilities. So even if SpaceX ends five years from now, they've changed the space industry, I think, for the better, for, for business and private industry to work together with, with the big, uh, the, uh, the, the big you brother the, of NASA, you know, the, the, the yeah. oversight, you know, we've, we, we know what we're doing and how to do it well. All right, you guys can figure out how to make that happen, you know, and we'll guide you along the way. Um, so I'm excited to see what happens with that. Um, obviously more starship is, is, is in the books. And yeah. I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm like addicted now. You know? I, I'm like scared to like guess how far they're going to get with star starship because I, I feel like they're going to blow past it. Um, so I, 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 I'm just looking forward to, to what happens in the future there. The, the, the engineering team there is, is some of the best in the world. Um, and there's, there's more for them to come in the future. There's also a lot from, like you were saying, we've got these new companies, especially in the small satellite world, like Astra just had their first uh, mm -hmm. launch. We've got Rocket Lab that's doing a ton of stuff. Um, so uh, those smaller companies are going to have, I, I think, a big year. 
Um, and Space Force will definitely continue to grow as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they're in transition period still, um, but uh, with Starlink, Starlink may become an issue sooner than later with just astronomy in general, as they keep adding more up there, that will come up undoubtedly. Um, so to see what SpaceX does to solve that issue will be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, some things on the calendar for me, I'm looking forward to, you know, right off the bat, I think, you know, if, if the core stage of space launch system that's in a space center on, on the B2SS and like doesn't get tested this month for the hot fire test, which, you know, got a week to go, I don't think it's gonna happen, but um, that'll certainly be January. And then before February, the end of February, they're going to ship that thing to Kennedy and, and then like build the rest of the rocket and everything. And that's super exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and then by the end of the year, like if that stays on track, then we've got the first Artemis one mission, you know, where you've got an uncrewed lunar mission around the moon. Um, the first flight of Orion since its first like test flight in 2015 or 2017, where it did this kind of halo orbit around earth. It likes to go to the moon and back this time, which yeah. will be the, the, the next step before we have crew on board. Um, that's awesome. Um, Anything with Starship, like, I, you know, I know SN9 and SN10 are going to look just the same, but maybe the landing happens. Mm. But if there's any, I want to go out there as much as I can, but if there's any, like, design change or, like, any, you know, if we get, you know, super heavy out there, like, I, I got to see all those milestones because it's just so neat to see. Yeah. And and it's like, you know, the, the, the Space Coast and everything is... It's not in the middle of the country, you know. It's somewhere that that if you're local or or if you travel to, you get a really cool experience. Uh, imagine that, but like only ten percent of it, and then that's Boca Chica. Like it's even more remote, mm. and there's nothing nearby. <laughs> like you, you have to go out there. You have to do like not just the location, but the timing and everything um, mm. to, to to get some of the activity happening. So uh, anytime you can make it out there and actually see something and, and share it with the world, is it's it feels like an opportunity. Mm, absolutely. Um, Boeing Starliner, you know, we saw Starliner on the pad. Yep. Uh, we were not there for CRS-19. Uh, a few weeks later, it tried to reach the space, space station, and then there were a number of issues that, that mm -hmm. caused it not to. We'll see. I think March 29th is the next test date for that, for the second mm -hmm. uh, orbital flight test. And um, if that goes well, then we could see the, the demonstration mission with astronauts before the end of the year. Yep. And um, we've also got crew two in the spring and crew three in the fall where we've already got, you know, the next and the next SpaceX astronaut launches. So mm. that, that's wild. Um, and then I think we're going to see, um, is it Axiom that's doing like a, a, a private launch where they've got a former astronaut and a former astronaut and then two other people who will fly to the ISS via SpaceX. And it's, everyone's pretty sure it's Tom Cruise and his director, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's going to be next fall too. So there's a ton of just cool stuff. And, and mm. you know, all the test flights that we've seen with Virgin Orbit and Virgin Galactic, um, you know, we'll see a lot more of um, Blue Origin and New Shepard flights. Mm. Hopefully we'll see something happen with ULA and Vulcan, the new rocket, you know? Yes. I'm very new, excited for that. Yeah. Maybe we'll see something about new Glenn because it's the same engine BE4. The powered mm -hmm. both, and it's finally getting to be ready after you know several years in the works. Yep, we'll um, find out about it five minutes before it happens. Exactly, or or, <laughs> or right after it happened. You right. know? Um, so, a ton of ton of really cool stuff to look forward to next year, and I'm so glad that I've got you know uh, friends like you who who I can share it with and everything. So. Same, man. I I just so happy to see like i said where where you've come with this and now now i've got a a, a space super friend to uh to talk about this stuff so uh, and a couch, a couch in orlando if and a it. couch in orlando thank goodness yeah thank goodness. the other day I, the other day um there was there was a launch that i went out for the first time and scrubbed and the second time my kid was asleep and it was a saturday morning i didn't want to wake him so was, i'm gonna try to view a launch from my couch for the first time so i opened up like maps and i thought I said, okay, there's there's 39A launch pad with the compass and everything like lined up. So that's where I need to look. Okay, I got a view of that. Okay. And I had I had the launch, you know, the SpaceX live stream on it my TV. Great. And then I like looked at the window and it's like those two things are happening at the same time because it's the same thing. It's so neat. <laughs> and that was with my iPhone zoom. So like next time I'm gonna put a camera out there and, and, and actually like see what I can capture. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. All right, man. I hope you get to see you in person in 2021. Thanks. Same here. I'm I'm really looking forward to 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 that, for sure. All right. Human All right, human ahead. connection. <laughs> no kidding. All right. Bye, everybody. See you guys.